team traction here. You can join me on a bit of a different video. Um, out in the lovely weather, it's boiling hot summer's afternoon. And I am just started filming for a new workshop series. Now, uh, I have promised that I'm going to do a video on my double O scale layout. Let's have a little tour of that, but it's not finished. And I think the biggest thing I hate about YouTube is showing things incomplete. But I'm going to bite that bullet. Um, I won't be doing my double O layout, but because it's nearly finished, so I feel like starting a new series on that will be pretty much pointless. So I have got a second layout, and uh, it's a bit different from double O. It's a scale gauge combination called O9. Um, I'll explain why I've used this pretty much unheard of combination in a minute. But I based on something from scratch, and because it's such an unheard combination, I have to scratch build everything. So it's going to be a journey, and I'm going to give you regular updates, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to do a sort of three part video um, over this weekend. For this part, I'll showcase the layout construction of the boards. The second part, I'll show you some of the buildings, and the third part, I'll show the locomotives. So let's get on with it. So the place I'm modelling, it's a real life place, uh, you may have heard of it. It's called the Bure Valley Railway. Yes, um, it's a place I visited in Series 1, Episode 1, so the first ever video on my channel. Uh, go check that out, I'll leave a link. Um, uh, basically it's a 15 inch minimum gauge heritage railway, for those who don't know. It's in Norfolk and it runs from Wroxham to Alsham, that's just a brief summary. So I'm basically modelling the Alsham state station. It's going to be uh, it's going to be about eight foot long. Uh, in real life, uh, if you scale it down, uh, the canopy of the station measures about eleven foot. So I'm I'm reducing it by scale, but I'm keeping it to the same proportions. If you know what I mean. So it's basically just going to be shortened a little bit. So instead of being eleven foot, the station roof is now seven so it's scaled down by 64 percent all of the length measurements but that's all the buildings um to make the baseboards they're just two four foot boards four foot by two foot boards i will be making a third board uh, but that'll be for shows only but i'm not making that yet so i'm just starting out with the two boards so it's gonna be eight foot layout and um well let's get on and show you it now before I show you it as it is, I'm going to put in a little montage of how it came to be, so the construction of it. Okay, enjoy! <laughs> state as you can see um, the boards they're nice and fl flush and flat they join together like so with two two coach screws and they just slide together I won't do it just yet but uh, yeah so it's eight foot in total I will be doing a third board over that way but not yet um, so they're screwed in if we flip one of these boards over, just doing this in the garden because there's no room inside. You see the method of construction, obviously you've seen me do it on the time lapse. But uh, all it is is just basically bits of timber screwed into MDF. And it's lightweight, it's sturdy and it works. So if we flip the other board over, I am filming this handheld so excuse the shaky cam but uh, you can see they they just slide in the two boards together they do like to come out sometimes um, but uh, all in all they should stay in there we go and then you just put a couple of wing nuts on there and they stay together so that's pretty much the layout construction I know it's quite a short video in fact, I might just pair them all together, showing all three parts. I don't know yet, but we'll see. So, 
like I say, I'm going to do these three videos with the layout boards, the buildings and track, and then the trains. And then from there, we'll do sort of maybe monthly, I don't know, every two month updates, showing how the layout's getting on from start to finish. Because I know a lot of YouTubers do that, and a lot of people enjoy the model side of YouTube trains. And I think I might as well just do the same. Because it be something that you'll all enjoy. All right. So that's pretty much it for the boards. So this is part two of my new layout so we've just had a look at the boards and the base of it and the next part is now we're going to look at the track and buildings so without further ado let's take a look so i haven't explained yet what 09 actually is 09 is the scale gauge combination i'm using and it's a mixture of really all of the three main scales because you use, you use two millimeter to the foot scale track, like here. So this is this is double O nine track, but it works for O nine as well. See, I have got some in gauge stuff, but I'm converting it. Um, and you use in gauge chassis and bogies and all like that. But the figures you use are seven millimeters to the foot scale, so O gauge. So O gauge figures an engaged track and it works out that you can use things like the fittings for double o locomotives on this system as well so you use o gauge figures and buildings and scenery with uh double o gauge sort of locomotive fittings on engaged track so it's very very odd combination but this is all the track i've got so far uh, it's not all of it by far, I need a lot more than this, so this is only like a part one of the track. We've got the yard long bits there, You've got short straights, long straights, three way point, which is used in a station. And then you've got the bits that join to the other side of the three way point. And you can see what I'm doing, is this is how they come. But the sleeper uh, out of the box is engaged, but the sleepers are way too small. So what I'm doing to try and hide it is every other sleeper I cut out. I'm not finished doing it yet, but that's basically how all of these are going to look like. So it's more accurate because you can't re-sleeper points. Really, it's going to be extremely hard to re-sleeper points. You can, however, re-sleeper straight track. So I, what I've done is I've got these pieces of engaged track, set track, cut the sleepers off, and then just slid a 009 sleepers on. Added a spare one in the middle, and it looks pretty darn similar to that, and it works. If you're wondering why there's a couple of sleepers cut off there, it's so they can fit on the points. But yeah, that's basically all the track. Uh, there's no curves. I'll be using the flexi track to make curves. Um, but now we'll go on to the buildings. So I've only got one building here to show off. The other buildings are with my layout. So I'll show you them in a little while. But these are the four walls of the first workshop. Um, you see, so you've got the interior and then the exterior. It's basically just built up with lots of layers of cardboard and then the outside is plaster card. Um, this yellowy stuff is just filler, filling in the gaps. Uh, you see here, I've started detailing the walls with plug sockets. Need to be fine-tuned. The actual boards that are on the railway at the moment showing the state of the trains, they need to be tidied up. And then here you've got, um, do you want to focus? Thank you. You've got the other, you've got one of the ends and you've got the other end. This goes out to the outside and this goes into the second shed. But uh, this door, it will be repainted because of all of the bits, but it does open. It does open and then you can 
clip it in and it shuts and that's the floor of it so yeah that's basically that building so that's what the first small workshop there's also a running shed which connects directly onto there and it's twice the length and we've also got the station building so i'll show you those now all right so i've now gone back to my granddad's and i've laid out all of the buildings on to the boards now obviously these aren't complete and they're very scruffy at the moment they'll be tidied up a lot that's all the final product but you can see this is the first section that i showed you and this is the running shed which is twice as long and this is the station building which is still being constructed uh, as you can see this building does go over the joining the boards but all of the buildings will be removable so that won't be a problem right so the buildings all that's missing now are the track and here it is with the track that's the magic of editing so as you can see i haven't got all of my track yet far from it but it gives you a sort of base idea about how this is going to look so we've got the three main lines coming down the middle uh, there will be track going in the center as well when i get enough but they all go down the middle yes this branches onto that connects to there and then it also goes to the sheds so the turntable here which then goes down next off there onto a turntable there this track will actually curve and go parallel to this one as you see curve slightly it will um, do the same and then we've got this fourth track which is two SL 400 so two yard long straights and that just connects on at the very end so yeah we just uh, we just move this a little bit there you go so that's in line so as you see I haven't got all the track but with the track I have got uh, so it's also not wired I will put on the trains that is the last bit to show you so we'll be back then. right so come indoors for the final bit uh, to show the locomotives and these are all in a special box so they've all been scratch built and they're all very precious so yeah they're all in bubble wrap and everything so what we'll do I'll move it to one side and I'll get out one engine at a time so the first engine is going to be actually the last one on the list of BBR stock. It's number nine, Mark Timothy. So this has been completely scratch built. Um, it's made out of a mixture of woods, plastics and metal. Uh, so finishing the gloss finish, it's not done yet. Obviously it's got no wheels, none of my stock have no have wheels yet or none of the engines so that's to come uh, but apart from that I need to add, add the glass and then it's and then the engine itself is finished but just got to get the chassis but I've lined it using decals and there's the other side the whole cab construction is MDF so I did have a non laser cut cab but it just didn't look nice so I've laser cut this one got boiler and the dome and the chimney, they, these domes, chimneys, they were cast apart, so I bought. The smoke box and smoke box door is actually off a 9F of all things, uh, 00 scale 9F. And the body, oops, the body itself is a 64 X pannier. Uh, you wouldn't believe it looking at it now, but it did start life as a pannier tank. So what I'm going to do is I've t I took photos of the construction, how it got to here, and I'll play that in a little time lapse now.
next engine, if we put number nine to one side, is what well, comes in two parts, the engine and the tender. So this is the engine. This is Bure Valley Railway number seven Spitfire. Uh, this is a 262 engine, obviously it's got no chassis again, but it will do. And this is, again, modified, very heavily modified double O scale engine. Uh, it's actually a Backman J11, would you believe? Uh, what I did was I, lo I made new frames, uh, lowered it down into the frames, except for the cab. Uh, cut a new back of the uh, cab windows, um, new chimney, and uh, yeah, that's the that's the engine, and uh, it also comes with the tender, which is the only bit of stock. Well, it's the only bit of rolling stock to have wheels at the moment. I do have one engine with wheels. I'll show you that in a minute. But this is. The tender and that just goes behind it. That's pure uh, MDF construction, whereas this is obviously plastic and a bit of metal because it's a because um, it's a ready to well X ready to run loco modified. So yeah, so that's number seven. <laughs> seven to one side now and it's this next one is half of an engine it's number six but unfortunately number six to make the body because it's identical to number seven to make the body of number six like the engine I'll have to get another J11 and they're expensive so the body of number six can wait but when I laser cut the tender for number seven I made a couple of extra copies and here they are show from that side um, and you may think oh there's just more tenders for number seven but no it's two tenders for number six and why two well because number six called Blickling Hall has been in two distinct liveries in its lifetime which is Great Eastern Blue that's post 2016 and crimson so and that was pre-2016 so i've got those two laser cut and they're there for when i get j11 uh chasse body and that means i will have to get two but that's fine this one will be finished first the crimson version then followed by the royal blue version that's number six And the last one I've made is number five. Number five is the only one that's actually come from a kit. Uh, it's the only, only one that will come from, well, only engine that will come from a kit. This is it. Uh, it's a Lister tr diesel tram. Uh, they have it, one exactly like this at the Bure Valley, obviously. And this one does have a motor and it does run but it's not running yet because I haven't wired my layout up. Oops, the trouble is it is very flimsy, um, unfortunately. It is brass, but it does mean it's not very strong and it's, it is quite fragile. Nevertheless, that's number five. Now this would be pre-2015, this one, because after that they've now converted it to the original list, Lister diesel. What well, the appearance so it's green and red. So this is pre twenty fifteen. Still a nice thing to have there. So here it is. The layout. 
with some trains on. I've seen there's not all of them. Got a lot more trains to build, uh, including Roxham Broad, number three, second air division, USAA F. There, I've got number five, got I need number four, which is a little diesel shunter. Then number six I need, got number seven, and I also need number eight. So still quite a bit to do. I see I'll, as well, as you know, there's not enough track to finish it. I need more track. And I need to stabilize these buildings because these need to be flat and straight. But for now, for a first go, it's passable. So I'll end off. Obviously I can't have them running, but I will run a like mock run a couple of these engines down to show you how it all goes. So let's get these out of the way. So this Lister tram is one of the few things that does will run at the moment because it does have a motor inside, but as you see the track's not very flimsy at the moment. I need to pin it all down later but put that on to one side so what happens so imagine so this tender does go with this engine imagine they're coupled for now uh, let me just get it on the right track so what happens is oops and it came have to ignore the sound oh. so what happens is it come there over there is where it would be for Roxham so over that way um, so it comes in from Roxham train and tender it stops stops here just shy of the points and then it will come forward obviously together you have to use your imaginations a bit here and then the points get switched let me see if I can just put it on and then it goes down here engine and all it goes down and it goes to the bottom down there and then Obviously, up there is where the uh, turntable will be. Goes to the turntable, and then it comes back to the end of the train. Pretty much there. it. That's so all I've got to show you for the, this little mini introduction. I will probably be doing monthly or twice a month uploads on updates to this layout. Stay tuned for that. This is Team Traction signing off. And I'll see you in the next video. You've just been watching Team Traction. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Also, check out our other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye, Bye for now. now.